Good morning. Good morning. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus be with all of you. We welcome you in the name of Christ, uh, especially all of you who are visiting us today, also those who are worshiping with us on Facebook. What a wonderful day. Today we have a baptism. Read Thomas Cooper is going to be baptized and be welcomed into God's family. So if you can, please stand so we can start our service. This is the third Sunday of Easter. We are celebrating Jesus' resurrection and life.
We start today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us confess our sins into God our Father. We have come to worship our great God. However, in our sinful condition, we cannot get near to Him. Let us confess our sins to God and one another. Deliver us, O Lord, from all our sin and restore us by your promise. By the grace of God, that is one who is worthy to take our requests for forgiveness to God's throne of Christ, of grace. Jesus Christ alone is worthy, for he is God's own lamb and has ransomed us from our sins by dying for us and rising in glory. He declares us to be saints, able to go to God in all confidence, ordering our prayers for one another and all people. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the first reading for this uh, beautiful day is, it comes from Psalm 30. Lord, I will give you honor. You brought me out of the deep trouble. You didn't give my enemies the joy of seeing me die. Lord, you brought me up from the place of the dead. You kept me from going down into the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord. You are faithful to him. Praise him because of his name, Lord. You turned my loud crying into dancing. You removed my clothes of sadness and dressed me with joy. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raise up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the, the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today's servant seeking elder, Charlie Stock, will now approach the lectern to lead us in the first reading from Acts 9, 1 through 22. Today's epistle reading is from Revelation 5, 1 through 7. Pastor will lead the congregation in reading the Holy Gospel from St. John 21, 1 through 14. The first reading is Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 22. Meanwhile, Saul continued to oppose the Lord's followers. He said they would be put to death. He went to the high priest. He asked the priest for letters in, to the synagogues in Damascus. He wanted to find men and women who belonged to the way of Jesus. The so letters would allow him to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. On his journey, Saul approached Damascus. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground. He heard a voice speak to him, Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there. They weren't able to speak. They had heard the sound, but, the eye, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground. He opened his eyes, but he couldn't see. So he led him by hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. He didn't eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a believer named Ananias. 
the Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias, he said, Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Taurus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name was Ananias. In a vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Lord Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he's come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. I'll show him how much he must suffer for me. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. He placed his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right away, something like scales from, fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. After eating some food, he got his strength back. Saul spent several days with the believers in Damascus. Right away, he began to preach in the synagogues. He taught that Jesus is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. They asked, isn't he the man who caused great trouble in Jerusalem? Didn't he make trouble for those who worship Jesus? Hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? But Saul grew more and more powerful. The Jews living in Damascus couldn't believe what was happening. Saul proved to them that Jesus is the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Revelation chapter 5, the first seven verses. Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. The scroll had writing on both sides. It was sealed with seven seals. I saw a mighty angel calling out in a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll. No one could even look inside it. I cried and cried. That's because... No one was found who was worthy to open the scrolls or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not, cry, do not cry, the lion of the tribe of Judah has won the battle. He is the root of David. He is able to break the seven seals and open the scroll. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if he had been put to death. He stood at the center of the area around the throne. The lamb was surrounded by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes. The eyes stand for the seven spirits of God, which are sent out into all the earth. The lamb went and took the scroll. He took it from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you can, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 to 14. After this, Jesus appeared to his disciples again. It was by the Sea of Galilee. Here is what happened. Simon Peter and Thomas, who was also called Didymus, were here together and Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee were with them. So were two other disciples. I am going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. They said, well, I'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. That night, they didn't catch anything. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, don't you have any fish? No, they answered. He said, 
Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. When they did, they could not pull the net into the boat. There were too many fish in it. Then the disciples, then the disciple Jesus loved said to Simon Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Peter heard that, he put his coat on it. He had taken it off earlier. Then he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat. They were, t they were towing the net full of fish. The, sh the shore was only about a hundred yards away. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals. There were fish on it. There was also some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat. He dragged the net to shore. It was full of large fish. There were 153 of them. But even with that many fish, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same thing with the fish. This was the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Children, today we're going to do something different. I want to welcome you all up front while we have the baptism. Miss Beth is going to help us. So please come. Godfather, Godmother, Thomas. Are you ready, Thomas? Read. Yeah, it's second, Thomas. Read, Thomas. Come over here. Yes. You can come closer. Just face the congregation, okay? All right, children. It's so nice to have all of you of you. Now you're going to see, you're going to watch again. Once you did, you were baptized as well, but I'll let Miss Beth tell you the story, okay? Today, you're just going to watch We Baptize Read, okay? 
Let's start today then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear beloved, Christ the Lord says in the first, in the, the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, in everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Okay. So read Thomas Cooper. Receive the sign of the cross. Receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon our, your chest as a sign that you have been redeemed and marked by Christ the crucified. Dear sponsors, I want to address you now. It is your intention to serve. Read Thomas Cooper as a sponsor in the Christian life. If Yes, say please, yes, with the help of God. God enable you to both will and do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Congregation, please stand again for the reading of the gospel, the gospel of the holy baptism. According to Mark chapter 10, people were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as this that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them in, up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to address Reed, and the whole congregation can answer with Reed and with Mom and the sponsors. Reed Thomas Cooper do you this day in the presence of God and all this congregation acknowledge the gift that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. do you renounce the devil? Yes, I do you renounce all his works? Yes, I them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence who come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you love us is so great. You chose us to be your children. You brought us into your holy family through your holy baptism. You thus gave us forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to remember our baptism. 
and bask in its blessings every day. Bless Reed Thomas Cooper as he is about to receive the Holy Sacrament of Baptism and remind him you will be with him always with forgiveness, with your cross, and with the promises of the eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. The congregation may be seated. Read Thomas Cooper, do you desire to be baptized? Read Thomas Cooper, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, is strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray again. Let's bow down and pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank you and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Reed Thomas Cooper the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. Be with him, be with his family, and O oh Lord, remind him always of your cross, your suffering, and the life everlasting you granted to him by the sacrifice on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Betsy and Meyer comes forward to lead in the children's message. message. We've got a we've got a good bunch today, and it's nice to see. Good morning, children of God. How are you this morning? We just saw something very special today, didn't we? Yes. What was it? What did we see? Flowers? We saw beautiful flowers. What did we see, Jonah? We saw what? We saw a baptism, didn't we? We saw Reed get baptized this morning. And you know, Reed is my great-grandson, so I was really glad to be able to sit right up here in front so I could see what was going on. Now, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a little baby baptized. Savannah Small was baptized here. And I was upstairs in the balcony with the choir, and I saw some of you. And this is what you were doing. Well, during the baptism, while little Savannah was being baptized, you were going like this. And you were in the back, and you were just reaching, and some of you were standing on the pew trying to see what was going on, and you were trying to see the baptism. So today, so I asked Pastor Copper if today, and I checked with Reed's family to see if it would be okay, if you could come up in front and you could see the baptism and see just what happens. So there are some people in the back today, they're way back there, and maybe they couldn't see the baptism today. So can you tell them, what did pastor do? Jonah's the only one, were you the only one who saw it, Jonah? Oh, <laughs> oh now, oh, okay. What did pastor do, Jonah? You had your hand up first. How did he do that? What did he do? A seashell, oh. I didn't understand. He used a seashell. You saw that? I didn't know if anybody noticed that. He did something different today, and he used a seashell to put the water 
on Reed's forehead, didn't he? We're going to talk about that in a minute, Jonah. You were being very observant. So did Reed look dirty to you today? Did you think Reed looked dirty? No, but we do use water if our hands get dirty. We clean our hands. Can you all show me how you'd clean your hands if your hands were dirty? Or you might have to wash your clothes when your clothes get dirty, or probably you don't have to, but I bet somebody at your house washes the clothes. Now, even when you look so nice and clean and you're all dressed up for church, we're still dirty inside because what's inside of us? There's sin inside of us. There are bad things that we do. And, and we, something special happens during baptism when the water reminds us how Jesus died on the cross to wash our sins away. So during the baptism, what did Pastor read from? From what? A book? What book does he read from? The Bible. The Bible, Blakely, that's right. He was reading words from Matthew and from Mark, words about baptism, and he read from the Bible. And Pastor also made a sign over Reed's chest, over his heart, the sign of the, of, of the Father and the Son and the, and the Holy Spirit, that's right. And he made that sign over Reed. And do you know when all those three things are there? So when the water is there, when the word of God is here, when the water is here, and when the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is here, then a special miracle, a special gift comes from God, and we all become children of God. And today Reed became a, children, a child of God, you are all children of God, loved by God. So when, um, when you look at all the people out here, they've been washed clean by baptism too, and our sins are forgiven, and we're all in God's family. Now I have one more question for you, and that Jonah already answered, so let's see if you were listening. What did Pastor have in his hand when he baptized little Reed? A seashell, and it was very pretty. If you saw it, it's a silver seashell. I have one that's a real seashell here. It's the same shape, though, and inside, Kiefer, what does it say? You're right here. It says, child of God. And I have a seashell for each of you that Will is going to give you in a little bit. Not quite yet, Will, but he's going to hand those out to you after we say our prayer. But first, I want to tell everybody about something that you all did last week. Those of you who are here for Kingdom Kids... The little kids talked to Miss Marie, and the older ones talked to me, and you told us what you know and what you believe about baptism. And we wrote those things down, and then I made them into a letter from you to give to read, a letter about baptism. We also have one for Savannah, because we didn't have the letter done when Savannah was baptized. And Blakely, aren't you going to have a new baby at your house pretty soon, too? So we're going to have a letter ready for Blakely's new baby, too. And you have a baby at your house, too? Yeah. That's right. I think Jacob? Oh. Okay. Oh, I know. All right. Well, I wanted to show you my symbol of baptism. That's what a shell is, and that's why Pastor used it. It's a symbol of baptism, and each of you will get a shell to remind you of of the special gift that we have from baptism. And I'm going to give it to you right after we say our prayer. So let's do that now. And I want to tell everybody out here, if you'd like to see the letter that the kids wrote, it's really very good. And if there's an extra copy of it back on the table in the entryway, and you can take a look at it and read it too. So let's say our prayer. Let's all together, uh, we'll do an echo prayer today. So I'll say a little, then you say it, and we'll ask everybody else to help us too. Dear God, thank you for the gift of baptism. of baptism. You forgive our sins, you forgive our sins so, that we can be so that we can be your dear children. Your dear children. We, are so we are so glad that you love us. You love us. Be, with be with Reed and Savannah, and Savannah. So, they so they learn about Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay, now uh, Sarah's going to give our our uh, letter to the to the 
new baby, and Will's going to help here, and maybe Miss Bree. So if you'll quietly come by, and you go back to, to sit with your parents, and you can get your gift. In preparation for Pastor Sherman, the congregation joins in singing I Am Jesus, Little Lamb, Lutheran Service Book 740. Pastor Topper's sermon message for today is titled, Come Early in the Morning to Meet Jesus, based on today's gospel reading. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of us today. A wonderful festive day as we baptize Ray Thomas Cooper and also a day to celebrate resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. You have heard the saying, early bird catches the worm. It's a well-known saying we all use every once in a while. It is a motivational thing to say that if you wake up early in the morning, you'll probably see or get ready to work. Also, if you say that the early bird catches the worm, you mean that the person who arrives first in a place is most likely to get what they want. But besides work, there are many other things that are consider uh, a benefit to someone who wakes up early in the morning. A site dedicated to the well-being of people says that you, if you got up early in the morning, you have the chance to spend more time with yourself, which is very helpful to you. And when you wake up in the morning, you have time for your devotions and to talk with God and many other things. It suggests that people are happier when they wake up early in the morning. You might not agree with me in that matter, but you will certainly agree with me when we read the gospel this morning and we see that it was early in the morning when the disciples saw Jesus and Jesus approached to them. It was early in the morning when Martha and Mary went to the tomb and saw no one inside, but Jesus was risen. It was also early in the morning that other meaningful things happened in the Bible and God's people's lives, like Moses getting up in the morning, climbing the Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. Or maybe Joshua early in the morning leading Israel across the Jordan River. And we all know what it is across the Jordan River. It is the Holy Land promised to 
the Israelites. A lot of wonderful things happen early in the morning. I would say a lot of good and meaningful things took place in God's people's lives early in the morning. However, none of them can be, or maybe some can be compared to the one that happens in our reading of the gospel in John chapter 21. And I'll tell you why. It was early in the morning that Jesus gave the ultimate assurance and the ultimate hope about life to desperate and lost people who were so, whose life was so messed up, whose life was a little and disarranged as they went back fishing when they supposed to be fishing for men. Jesus comes to that day into that place to reassure the disciples that none of the, th the things that they believe were in vain. Jesus shows up to the disciples to tell them, I am alive, I am the Christ, I am the winner, I am victorious over death. Don't be afraid. You're going to go back and continue the mission that God has started back in paradise when he promised the Savior, the Lord, who would annihilate death and bring life into the people again. So what happened that morning? The disciples looked and didn't recognize Jesus. Did Jesus lost some weight when he was in the tomb? <laughs> He let his beard grow so they could not recognize him. What happened? What happened? As they look and they see, they are not sure if that was Jesus or not. We don't know exactly why they did not recognize Jesus, but we know for sure that in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9, it says that even though Jesus Christ told the disciples about all the things that would happen, they did not realize how it would happen. They didn't quite clear understood what would happen and why it would happen in the way it did. So here is Jesus, the same Jesus, appearing to them. I always think that if you do not believe that Jesus could be victorious over death, you're not going to believe he is there. I guess they didn't quite believe was Jesus there because they thought Jesus was dead. This is not the first time Jesus appeared to them, yes, but they still didn't believe what they were seeing. But here is what the, the reading of the gospel means. This is what the reading of the gospel wants to teach us today. The disciples did work all night and catch anything. And as it happens in the past, before Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus commanded them to cast the nets again. They work all night, and we all know that the best time to fish is at night. Well, at least if you have nets. I know there's a lot of fishermen in this congregation, so I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just, just telling what the Bible says. <laughs> so Jesus said, cast the nets again. And it's not about fishing. At least it's not about fishing fish. It is about following Jesus' command. It's about to learn that when the word of the Lord is said, then you have to obey because obeying the, the word of the Lord brings you blessings to your life and to the life of others so Jesus say even though you have been working all night even though you are tired even though you don't maybe believe that this is the right thing to do I am commanding you to do this and do it and you will see the blessings so they do it and they catch fish again 
and they're all happy, and then Jesus cooked breakfast for them. If that is a lesson in this reading, I am going to repeat myself a little bit, but this is important. If there is a, a, a lesson in this reading, it is this. Obey Jesus' word. But one more thing besides that. It is this order over here. It's a kind of foreshadow of the other order that Jesus is going to do or going to give before he goes into heaven. He will say, now you go and baptize everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Obey it. And you will see the fruits of the kingdom. You will see the nets will be filled with, not with fish, but with men willing to serve the kingdom and spread this wonderful news that Christ is not in the tomb, that Christ is not dead, that he is victorious, and he is in heaven, preparing a place for us as we continue his mission on earth. Obey the word, obey the command, cast the nets, and you will see the blessings. I know that our struggles, we struggle with our old man all the time. We struggle with our past. We struggle with our time. We don't have much. We are all busy doing the things that we need to do for our own sake. We have our families. We have jobs. We have so much going on in our lives all the time. Sometimes it seems like it's almost impossible to serve the Lord. But here is Jesus' command to us that even though you have been working, you are tired, you can still and you will, by God's command, cast the net. The kingdom of God needs faithful people who will obey God's command and continue to throw the nets, to cast the nets so the kingdom of God can continue to grow. The disciples had a wonderful, but wonderful motivation in that early morning, early in the morning that day. They saw Jesus. They, rec they finally recognized him Jesus cooked breakfast to them. And there is another image of heaven. Jesus cooking breakfast, preparing a feast for us. We sing sometimes, this is the feast of victory of our Lord. It is a vision of heaven when Jesus is going to call all of those who were faithful to his word and to his command and welcome them into heaven and tell them, I have prepared a room for you. Welcome. Meanwhile, we continue to cast the nets, knowing that God is going to bless us in every and which way. My prayer is that we as congregation, as and individuals, continue to cast the nets, knowing that the Holy Spirit will bless every and each effort. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing the offertory. The usher will now approach the altar to receive the offering plates for distribution. You are listening to the sun. You are listening to the Sunday morning divine worship service from St. Paul Lutheran Church in California, Missouri, through the facilities of KRLL.
Pastor Copper has brought us a sermon titled, Come Early in the Morning to Meet Jesus, or live stream. our live stream di- di- director is Jason Youngmeyer. You may listen and watch our Sunday sermons at your leisure by visiting our website at stpaulslutheran1860.com. St. Paul's Congregation also offers you a daily devotional message on the telephone by calling 573-796-4754. A different message is recorded daily. We also invite you to listen to the worldwide message of the Lutheran Hour, broadcast on station KRLL at 7.30 a.m. each Sunday. Today's Lutheran Hour was sponsored by Marge Keister. Each weekday morning at 6.15 a.m., the California Ministerial Alliance conducts a five-minute devotional program on KRLL. We invite you to begin your day with these messages this week. Devotions are offered by Rev. Frank Hensley, pastor of the New Life Christian Church here in here. In, here in California, Missouri. The congregation sings the offertory found on the page 159 of the service book as the ushers bring the offering plates to the altar for the blessing. Then Pastor Copper will lead us in the prayers of the church, the Lord's Prayer, the blessing, and will offer the benediction. Let us pray. Let us pray for ourselves, for all members of the body of Christ as we proclaim his resurrection and for all people in their various needs. O Lord, grant favorable favorable weather that crops produce bounty and famine be lessened. Remove the shackles of people suffering from injustice and oppression. Surround them with your caring instruments of your love Accompany first responders at home and armed forces deployed that peace and harmony may break out in all levels of human society. Lord, in your mercy. Guide your church, Lord Jesus, as she witnesses to your victory over sin and death. Direct all who announce the gospel promise of eternity in your presence and protect all the newly baptized as they groan in understanding your love. Grant insight into the world around us that we may more fully enjoy your good creation. Lord, in your mercy. O Holy Spirit, be among us here in this place and wherever people gather in your name. In your mercy, give us the strength and opportunity to grow in love towards one another, and in service to our communities. We pray for those near and dear to us, especially Clarice Alexander, Jim Alexander, Bill Bess, Darlene Blake, Helen Borgert, Felicia Brown, Heidi Crawford, Mark Crawford, Ralph Dudley, Emma Douglas, Gina Foster, Larry Gish, Joe Green, Karen Hagmeyer, Iris Hack, Ruth Higgins, 
Joyce Kiesling, Paul Kiesling, Carl Kister, June Kister, Lucas Manley, Brad O'Neill, Billy Rader, Michael Rex, Fred Shaggyman, Sandy Taylor, Debbie Van Buren, and Rick Worthy. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, with those celebrating anniversaries, we joyfully rejoice with them. Today, especially, we rejoice with Dennis and Doris Fisher as they are celebrating 59 years of union under God's love and blessings. May the God who has kept them together for this number of years of his infinite goodness and mercy continue to keep them together and bless their union. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for Ray Thomas Cooper and family. Heavenly Father, as he entered a family of faith through the waters of the Holy Baptism, give him your Holy Spirit to grow faithfully to the word that, uh, that saves and that redeems. Bless him so he can always trust Jesus, his Lord and Savior, and never lose faith, salvation, and life everlasting. Oh, Heavenly Father, for all the children of our congregation, we ask that you give them the blessing of healthy and faithful childhood, sparing them from any threats of this life. Replace their fears with a strength and courage to face whatever the day brings. May your love and care be with them always. O oh, Heavenly Father, gather in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and the spirit. Amen. If the congregation can, please service. stand so we can pray together the prayer Christ our Lord and Savior Lord Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And May lead us God not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For and thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory forever and family. ever. Amen. You all receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.